why, why are you feel that way? Is that more or less yeah, correct? Okay. Yeah. Is that right that 3,000 is not ah, the yeah, yeah. 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 thousand is not the same? Yes, it's not the same. No, it's not the same. 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 It's thick. You could say between 800 and 3,000. If you put up right. a map, if you if put up a map, map of Canada, yeah. Yeah. No, it's possible because middle Magdalena and Mandaparima is uh, what Lalona is in 2000. If you put up a map of Trinidad and you, and you look at the surface geology, the wells drilling are Brighton, the offshore wells, the wells drilled by, uh, by B, uh, NICO recently, and the, well, the Delaware wells. The Naparima section is only two to three hundred feet thick, complete section. Once you come south of that subtrust of that whole system, they start to get Naparima eight, one thousand, and then you come further south, it will be one thousand to two thousand, slightly okay. greater. Okay. Right. Okay. It's a lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, it's a lot. The point is here. Here we have, uh, you know, just the, the associated rocks are important because they may be. Uh, Able to fracture, no? so um, we need fracture. We need to do something with the rock so that it becomes more permeable. Shale itself can have uh, uh, porosity, matrix porosity. It can be good enough to have enough oil, but the point is permeability is better. But here we deal with argillites and not shale. We deal with argillites, right? Well, I have seen the rocks myself. Uh -huh. I have seen. Uh, we have analyzed and everything, and not the Trinidad, but I know all the other areas. Yeah, but it's the same thing like that. Generally, I it's call it apply. like. No, it's fractured. In general terms, you can call uh, arteriaceous uh, limestones to uh, calcareous shale. And there is a silty part of it. Some are charts also. And if you see the limestones, you will call it, if you remember uh, the Dunham's classification. That means some are allochemical, which forms there, and the other is uh, like detrital carbonates, no? so fossils and other things. And lime mud stone is mostly mud, mostly fine grain big rock. A little bit of uh, you see your globigerina and other things are there. But and uh, I think radio, 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 silicious cells are there also. And during okay. diagenesis, is what happens if you see a thin section, you will see that. There is further modification. The, the, there is a chemical gradient. So what we call the, the limestone part it, it, it dissolves. And so there is alternate bands of uh, shale and uh, the clay and TOC, and then carbonate, like thin millimeter scale alternations. So this, basically what you're saying uh, is that it's not whatever much. you have Wherever you find it, you've got to drill the horizontal wells and frack them. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, well, next next slide is what okay. I need. To Whatever they are. The shale sequence. These are the things that these are the things that I can you, I can find and use to discriminate my initial screening. My initial screening will depend on this. So suppose you give me five areas, I will use this criteria to define which you go first. No? So the, the sequence as a whole must be organic rich. And it, it needs to be mature that it has generated oil. And generated oil, and it needs to be enough maturity so that the oil quality is better. Because if I can have you know, a situation of the 0.75 and the organic matter is very rich, you have sufficient oil. But that oil will not produce. This will help you. So I, I have my opinion what the maturity range you look for. So it needs certain maturity which you decide. Because that's your, uh, that's the opinion you give to rank. And then we also identify the lithologic variations. In the sense these are uh, lime mud stones, these are like silty lime mud stones, charts and other things. Uh, so you separate them, 
And then you, you need to see the structural disposition so that you do horizontal drilling for a sufficient distance so that you can drain everything. You know? so, and it is not very deep because economy uh, point is the issue. So with this criteria, you can rent. Suppose you have a huge area, you can say, well, this is a better area to go for. Now, these are the things that are used for shale oil assessment. It will tell me whether these rocks have generated shale oil and retained. And then, secondly, what is the quality of the oil like now? And then, what is the saturation? And uh, so, I will just uh, discuss this. Uh, so, uh, well, I thought that, uh, it, uh, it, as we know, uh, even though I don't know much in our number of emails, what is that point? Thank you. So, uh, obviously, number of emails is originally type 2. The point is, this is you remember, because sometimes people, the geologists are all right, but chemists confused. Say, uh, this, uh, if you have now a Naparima hill, which is very mature, if you make HIOI, it will never plot type 2. It will be type 3 or 4. But that's what I want, because the point is I want some rock which has already produced the hydrogen index has gone to the oil, and the kerogen or source rock has much lower potential now. So original HI is important to assess. That we do by geochemistry. We can tell from actual measurements and the visual kerogen analysis what the original HI. And from that, I can calculate, estimate resources, say, so many uh, barrels of acre foot of oil within this area with this thickness, we can estimate. So, so the original kerogen is important. So don't be discouraged by what you measure, no? because that is the actual measure. And then it must be matured enough to have to uh, generated oil. And if it is a, we are talking about shale gas, we go to the over mature part. If we go for the oil, we go to the mature part. The same uh, company may have areas which are both. And then the oil is expelling uh, in large amount from point A to point 9. But I would, I personally would go even 1.1, 1.2. The reason is, I tell you, the reason is. Oil, suppose oil, you have seen GC, gas chromatogram, right? You have seen gas chromatogram. We assume from some experiments and uh, observations close by that when oil goes out of the rock, out of the source rock, and going to adjacent sands or wherever, to long distance, there is no changes in chromatography. The, the chromatographic fractionation is not there. That's why you do correlation. You see, you, you, but there is a fractionation or differences in the gross composition. So oil can be visualized like saturates, aromatics, and polar compounds, resins and asphaltines. Polar compounds sticks to the ore wall. No? So what gets, gets out as a migrating oil is compositionally heavier than the one that is inside the source room. It has been done, uh, there are many geochemical observations of that. So the, the point is it is critical that oil has, and I have seen in places that at 1.1, 1.2, what happens, your shale, which is oil, starts cracking to gas. So that gas helps. That gas which is already there helps to drive the oil out. So I think it's favorable. If, if I am the person to decide, I will go higher parts of that. Uh, 
Now, uh, I, I'm just showing it because with this you can screen. That means I have a whole section of, uh, say, 2003. And then I screen them. No? And then define these are the zones that are excellent source of this may be zones where the uh, saturation is high, oil is higher, and you can try to explain it. No? So, uh, what happens? We use the pyrolysis technique. And pyrolysis is what happens, see, it is the artificial yellow light. You tell me when to stop and yeah, also or summarize. But, see, pyrol but it's good to know, pyrolysis is like artificial maturation. So what happens uh, when you, we, we do, we take the sample and, and have a heating rate. First of all, suppose it is a fixed temperature. And, uh, and then we raise the temperature, then it fixed, and then it goes like this. And then uh, uh, these are identified by one kind of detector, and this is for another kind of detector. This detects free hydrocarbons. Say, what is already there? Suppose I have a mature uh, oil, part of the thing will come out as S2, S1. No? S2 is the peak which comes at a temperature which is by cracking of the organic matter still remaining. Still remaining. No? But part of the heavy oil is attached to it. Sometimes you see a shoulder and other These are details. This is free hydrocarbons. This is converted hydrocarbon in the laboratory. And this is it measures the oxygen. And so this is like S1 is measured like by weight. Say how this much of hydrocarbon is area suppose per gram of rock. This is also converted uh, hydrocarbon uh, from the kerogen, uh, which is this gram. These are gram uh, organic matter per rock, gram of rock. And this is the carbon dioxide per gram of rock. So you see that if oil is very mature, S1 should go high, this should go down, right? If this goes down, this goes high, oil becomes lighter. So, so pyrolysis can be a screening, and we don't, this, this pyrolysis is the analysis that we commonly give, but there is another pyrolysis which you can do at a different heating rate, and this separates into two. This separates into two. And then this becomes light hydrocarbons, like condensate. And this part is like distillating, like what you can extract out. And the other part you cannot take it out. So you see, by combining those peaks or visually, I can see the pyrograms and then see zones which are high S1 and S2 and take those as S1 initial screening and then go to details. It can be very useful. Some company are doing it. They just analyze a thick section and take pyrolysis. It costs not much. Uh, what is pyrolysis? $50. So they do it, screen it. And from there, you just see it. And you yourself can compare. And you can make your own criteria to separate Richard Jones. Even if it is relative, still it is fine. You see? <coughs> Now, another thing is important. This will tell you the use of pyrolysis and organic matter, what it can tell. Say, suppose uh, this is a bucket shape. Yeah? And you see, these are all bucket shells, mostly source of internal. Now, if you see here, we have uh, organic carbon. This is carbonate, carbon from carbonate, <coughs> more carbonate rich rock. And these are less carbonate. So shale carbonate can be discriminated just by uh, carbon carbonate. Previously, we used to do, every company used to analyze uh, mineral carbon and organic carbon. <coughs> but people forgot about it. But it is a very useful for now, for the shale oil.
And then, if you go to if you go to S1, you see S1, and you see S2. Okay. Now you see here, these zones are high S1, high free hydrocarbons, high available hydrocarbons. This is much less, and this is a shale which is also high, no? And you see, as if you go to S2, you see this is the source rock because it has high S2. <coughs> These are not really source rock because you have little S2, no? These are not really source rock. This is S2. So this is a source rock interval. This is a source rock interval. But oil has migrated there. Oil has migrated there. So you see, initially, this will screen you. Uh, this is section, your screen, uh, your section. That I can say within this section, well, uh, maybe this is the source, but this is the uh, area I will try to, uh, this is the area I will try to produce. Hmm? And this is within the shale source rock itself. So initial screening you do that way. Hmm? So you're going to be trying to produce <coughs> from the source rock the areas which are S2? Uh, no, S1. S1. Yeah. Because so you're that going is the into areas which are interbedded with the source rock. Right, right. It can be and in a smaller scale also. Right. The, the, okay. It may be much thinner alternations, but this happens. Right. So, uh, and then you'll be exploited. The production people, they just take it out, break everything, no? So the point is uh, there may be source rock, there may be this, yeah? right. limestones and shells. So, but, but if you get the oil, idea, right? Effectively, even if you take the whole zone and front, the whole thing, the oils will be coming right, but, but from the portion. They used to do, but it's a cost problem. Right. And, and so people have started learning, and they just now can produce in a selective Narrow zone. Okay. Because it has to be, after all, economy. <coughs> so this is, the, this is the other one that for I was telling that whether the oil will produce or not produce, or API gravity estimations and other things. So it is the same pyrolysis, but done in a slower rate, longer time. No? So the S2 peak separates up. See, it has become like two peaks. No? See, when we, these are artificial maturation, not with nature. But anyway, when we keep the temperature constant, this is what came out. No? Free hydrocarbons constant, no increasing by the thermal extraction. So it is, you are increasing up to this, up to 800, uh, and then what happens here? Yeah, 800 uh, constant, and then we raise the temperature and now uh, 400, we get a low and then another peak. This is the light hydrocarbons. These are the distillable hydrocarbons. That means what really can get out of the extra extraction. And the remaining, you will not take it out. No? It's the, it's the heavy, uh, you cracked it in the laboratory, but it's the extra heavy stuff, and you will not take it. So, suppose the, this is the, they just companies did it. So the Aramco developed, and the person they they didn't tell you what to divide by what, uh, and they termed it poppy, no? production oil or some producible oil index, sorry. and uh, they don't tell. But uh, the laboratory, whether for suppose, do the uh, the pyrolysis by the name of ROQ, reservoir oil quality. Uh, it's the same thing. They will be. So you see, we get the S1 and we S2 different, right? So suppose I increase the suppose I increase this, it will be heavier. Suppose I know, right? And suppose I increase this one very much, it's a extra heavy oil. So just by looking, you see, you can screen, you can screen. You say, uh, I mean. You can do a lot of good by doing this instead of trying to fax it.
and then here, this is the pile when this is the temperature and these are the hydrocarbons that comes out, you know. And these are the temperature approximately. So screening whether uh, by Bobby you don't get it because this is patent the ROQ like things, you know. If you do it at closely spaced intervals, you can screen that among my in my whole section, which is better, which is better for oil, for the fine, irrespective of source quality. When you say closed space, what is it? Ten foot, five foot? Yeah, foot? If, if it is an oil section, uh, you, you do it. But the how how thick which will one? be the intervals? You can do by lithology things. Right. See, if you visually see that they alternate very thinly, you select more. Otherwise, okay. less, you can, huh? yeah. thinking that yeah. you assume the same behavior. Hmm? Yeah. So you see, and then these zones can be correlated with the log data. You can use resistivity like this. Then right? resistivity gamma ray, right? Gamma ray will indicate source intervals better. Yeah. Resistivity of oil. So, so you can use that. People use geochemistry and then they are trying to extensively use log, log, calibrated log, uh, extending the um, Is this something I'm not going to do about the cutting size? Well, it? it can, but the point is you must be clear because earlier days people have dealt with uh, contamination. Mm -hmm. So, whenever you do this kind of thing, it should be without yeah. oil based mark. You must use a water based mark. I, I, I know that in, when people have specific intentions in exploration areas, suppose I've done some work in northern Iraq and this, that, they use water based mark. I don't know about uh, when and why or cheaper marks or whatever, but it can be done. It can be done. But uh, uh, if you contaminate everything, but cuttings is for, it can be used. Cuttings can be used. And then you can have selective uh, cores, no? or sidewall cores, where you can do other things. Because once you know the screening, yeah, and then you have the cutting analysis, you get a fair idea. So you can, you can uh, limit your uh, more expensive things, sampling, and then other analysis. But screening is important because we don't want to uh, break everything. And th these are the kind of things that you can eventually do. Whatever this S1, S2A, S2B uh, related in some parameters. Suppose I divide S1 by S2 plus S3, no? Or S2 plus S2 plus uh, all things. S1, S2, A, S2, B, it will show me the behavior. So they separated it and then they, they identified uh, that this is non-producible, like heavy oil, huh? mat, tar mat, and fair oil mat, good oil productivity. This they have done in conventional reserves. You can do it shape. You can do it shape. But I'm using, I'm learning that this technique should be used for screening least if you do geochemistry. And uh, then you can call it, here it is uh, showing you correlation of the uh, porosity permeability. Uh, this doesn't work very well for reasons. But you see, they have defined producible oil as pyrobitumen. So, so you can say that this don't can be like, like, you just change the, no. this is one, this is one. Similar things. The block different, but this is the thing which you, which will flow, which you will have to uh, produce. Because our idea is, after all, whatever we do, we need to know whether that can be produced. If, that, if it doesn't get out of the rock, then there is no purpose. No? Now, once I have the screening zone, you see, I'm helping a lot for the production, and then I will take out preserved cores. And instead of doing extract GC, I will do this thermal extract GC. 
That means the same rock I put inside and take out whatever comes out, but thermally extracted. So, so it gives the total picture of the uh, oil itself, the GC. And from GC we can predict uh, oil. But I would like that you combine with uh, saturated aromatic resin as well. Because you can see polar compounds, the differences, no? And then you can discriminate also. But thermal extract GC is done. And uh, this was developed uh, by John Castaño and uh, Wally. And they did a large project with uh, Amari Ben, I think, in Orinoco. And then you defined the technique, which was originally Shell. And Shell had a patent, then later patent the time is gone and we developed it. And it is like you put a rock, no? And then we can, the condensate we can do, but up to an oil, we can put in a, a pyrolysis and get all these S1, S2, S2, B. And then from ratios and calibrations, we can identify approximately a PR. So, we can get a GC, predict producible oil, get an estimated APR. So suppose these are thermally extract oil shells, and these are some shales which are really they are looking for shale oil. Huh? And you see, this is a oil while you have good huh? NLP distribution from, these are little loss they, they have. Uh, to me, it is like uh, say, at least uh, about 30 API. This is probably 35 to 40 API, more like that. You know? And but on the other hand, you cannot assume anything because this is another. To see that all these are gone, these are thermally extract, so it is not there. But if I conventional extract, if I extract in the laboratory, light ends are already gone, so I cannot assess. So I have to do with the rock itself. Huh? The selling oil shale there, you mean shale oil? Uh, uh, right, this is the rock. Okay, is this mature, already mature? So shale oil? Yeah. Yeah. For shale oil. Yeah. For shale oil. Well, this is the additional some examples they did with the sand, the oil in the sand. They are all heavy oils. But you see, this shows the technique more or less. You see, among these, huh, you can tell me that these are the more light compounds, right? That's one, free hydrocarbons, and you see this is less, these two are almost equal. So this is obviously lighter than these. And you see these are all this heavy stuff, so this will be heavy oil. We couldn't detect less than five, we cannot calculate. So these are the heavy, this is a 20 degree API. This is a uh, about 10 degree API. So the point is, it can be used. It can be used. Well, here it was a sandstone with heavy oil, and that is a shale with oil. And I know that we can do it. Even even uh, light oil, diesel, uh, we can do it. But it contaminates the machine, and I clean it. Nobody wants to do it. But up to, up to oil, so 30 plus, it can be done. And there is a calibration. Suppose uh, you have so many oils, you have the La Luna uh, rocks, but you know there are many oils which are good quality. Uh, you get some samples, and you make a calibration of your own, and so your API you have more computers. I take the data from my rock, and then take some oils, and then do a calibration. And that's what I use for that area, for basic. No? So you see, I talked about screening. I talked about uh, quality, no? sort of. Uh, well, yeah, we from GC, somebody says, what is the API, and we tell it here. We may be wrong by plus minus five, but uh, most of the time, we right. And this is, I just wanted to throw, it was like a research project never came out never published, but we had, I was impressed about the balloon. It was the own core, the drill. And then we took about two to four inches, we took samples. You see, 51 samples comes from a 270 feet. And what I want to say that 
all are excellent source works. You see, mo most of them are about two. One is a one or two is a one. No? They're all good quality source works. And then you see the carbonate content, very high. Uh, 10 to 18, 19, 95. So what rock you call? Some you will call like a, a limestone. Say, I call lime arch. So another, I will call this one, I will call like a calcareous shape. No? Uh, silica component is not there. You can do the mineralogy, XRD. And then I would like there to have a, uh, a plot, triangular plot. And then I know which is the color. Uh, so my, my general impression is, suppose, Aluna in Venezuela, Magdalena, not Eastern Venezuela, there will be more sandy, less carbon. But your Naparima is on the north, much further north than Maturi in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So, so it, suppose this kind of thing will probably be, and some are charts, pure charts. Those are because of the diagenetic process. And they, they will fracture, so also a natural fracture. Now, this is the, the publication and the sum I just wanted to show that they uh, the probably the thesis PhD thesis uh, by one of the companies. Uh, you, you see 2100 for us uh, and others, 2100 feet. And uh, these are all La Luna. And uh, they, they separated previously three zones. No? You see, these are more carbonate rich. Lower TOC related. Uh, I'll show you later. And then uh, this is a more shelling, and then again. So uh, these are because of the carbonate uh, content. You need to do this kind of thing. Uh, a little more detail of the study. These, these are the whole samples, and you see that carbonate content varies from 2.5 to about 67. 54, 57. Yeah, here it goes up to. 57, 60. And your TOC varies from about 1, uh, mostly 1, 11, and up to 11, 12 uh, percent. And if it is a mature, know that this is not the origin. TOC changes, quality changes. And we can calculate geochemically, we can calculate back the origin of that thing. So uh, these are the uh, eventual separation like data. Uh, Calcareous uh, is probably wrong. There is no more organic matter maybe. I don't know what pool comes from there. And calcareous limestone were more like uh, char, seal stone. You see, uh, silicious shale. So silicious shale, uh, seal stone, char, so all these things will be there. You know? And the other is source rock is varying between limestone, argillaceous limestone to argillite. But argillite, I would suppose, is more clay, right? So yeah. some experiments. I think he has published a paper some time ago in which they looked at the source rock from Trinidad all the way into Colombia and were indicating that as you get further east, it's more argillaceous, and further west you go, it's more calcareous. And uh, this is the TOC, which led to the whole Cretaceous. No? And, and Columbia, you see, Colombia is the place where other source rocks came into the middle of the Cretaceous. Because there are uh, oceanic and sediments also in there. But because of the tectonics, say, Mara, say Venezuela is not exposed to there, not even Peru, only late Cretaceous. Colombia, little Magdalena, has more source rocks. And uh, so, but this is the lagoon which I have seen section. And you see, these are rich in TOC, these are rich in TOC, uh, these are low in TOC. Uh, and T max, of course, if it is maturity is critical. This section is not the best, but maturity you um, use. No? Uh, suppose uh, point 0.9, point 0.9 will be about. 
Okay. I, I think, and, and another thing I didn't tell, the oil situation. Uh, what uh, we do, we give the, we make the solvent extraction. That means the quantity of oil that we can take it up in the laboratory. And we have a percent of the weight of the rock. But that is weight percent. From there, <coughs> depending on the oil quality, I can calculate by volume. Porosity is described as volume, right? Porosity is by volume. So the point is, if I have oil in volume, I, from there, if you give me the porosity, which you measure, I can calculate the saturation. So they know what saturation is commercial, what <coughs> they should go or not, no? what quality they should go. But geochemistry can help a lot. And then you can you can correlate with the logs, and then it becomes more powerful, more usable. Uh, and, and that's all you need to do. Then the rest is production. They want they want you to help in screening the thing which they will accept. Okay, now Vishnu discussed a lot, but I will just give you, uh, I cannot show you any conclusions, but I want to discuss with you the situations no? that uh, will, uh, you can speculate. Now, as I mentioned, Vishnu told that I have shown that's the Gatsby, Carton Rodriguez as well, eh? except one exception. All Naparima Hills source, uh, and uh, I don't know which is there, which is which is. Okay. Yeah, this part, part of the thing. Yeah. And, but variations I see, this I tell, and I have some concerns. Uh, if you, Krishna had an explanation uh, with related to margin of the continent's uh, configuration, that in offshore area, the Atlantic, Columbus Basin, uh, they are more terrestrial uh, contribution. Whether it is real or some reason, I have a little concern. But they are all coming from the lake locations. So we have this. Now, the, the point is, I can assume, even though maturity was not uh, properly defined because of biodegradation and other things, alteration, uh, but knowing from all these areas, I can tell that all these oils that came up due to oils initially were between 0.8 and 0.3. I'm assuming. You know? And uh, some data is there in your report. But uh, I'm generalizing. Now, so assuming that really the, the, the quality of the oil depends on source, depends on maturity, and depends on alteration. If I assume that the source and maturity are similar, oil quality should not be that different, we see. We, we see wide variation of API. Mm -hmm. They are all due to processes of alteration. They are not one, there are many. There are several alteration processes and different degrees of one and the other. Very complex, but easy to see and understand. And I think with geology, it can be very powerful. And I have some questions I will ask and I will tell you we can solve this if we do this. No? Okay, now let us see. I have defined by your alteration that we see unaltered oils, right? You know? Correct. And we see oils are biodegraded. We identify them in various intensities, some more, some less. We see residual oil and condensate, which is uh, due to fraction, evaporative fraction is And we find mixed oils, Krishna showed one uh, example, which is like heavy oil, extra heavy oil mixed with the uh, gas condensate. We have seen that. And uh, so they are all identified uh, by area, and maybe in the same uh, larger area, all are there. So we need, we, we can identify, geochemistry can tell you, and then you have to relate it to really uh, explore the possibilities of the deeper targets. No? But uh, from the geochemistry, I will tell why I expect deeper. So, well, these are the 
general or traditional processes. And uh, well, this is a very important process, biodegradation. And it mostly goes with water washing, except in few cases, which I'm not going to discuss now. But uh, and oxidation also, so surface exposure to biodegradation, this kind of oxidation. So this is bacterial degradation. And these are the two which are not really that different, uh, you know. Uh, this is the one that you can tell is part of the, uh, you know, evaporative diffraction. That it is favorable that gas comes out into the oil reservoir. And if there is a faulting, it will be unstable and it will dissolve part of the oil and go out. No? So the point is the oil part that is in the condensate comes from the oil itself. So we have a way to identify uh, these things. Now, these are the data that uh, this was work had. And this is for southern, uh, later there are more uh, done. Southern oil, basin oils. And you see some are non biodegradable This is from GC. Uh, the C15 plus, and you see these are the ratios, pH C17, Python C8. The, these are organic phases, terrestrial, marine, and more marine, more terrestrial, biodegradation, mature. Huh? So this is unaltered oil, these are biodegradable oils. Because the biodegradable oil moves this way. Huh? And then when alteration is very strong, this ratio is also disturbed, and then they move around. No? Uh, but, so we get both. Say, this diagram tells you both, that you have biodegraded oil and non-biodegraded oil. And then, suppose these are the ones from one, two, three, three, four samples. One from, pardon me, and the other, uh, one from Central and three from color. No? These are yeah. biodegraded. These are not biodegraded. These are original works. Now, these are from C15 plus. Now, if you look at the light hydrocarbons parts, C7s, light hydrocarbons are less than C10. And out of this C1, C1 has about 22 compounds. Some are straight chain, like NC7, simple structure, more complex, monobranched, so chain and then branch, and then polybranch. So they are getting successively complex structures. And by this process of loss, evaporative loss, diffraction, that's what we, we observe. So here what we see, this part is unaltered oil. These are biodegraded oils, less biodegraded to high biodegraded of the sea cells. And it's a very sensitive parameter. But the point is, when biodegradation is there, evaporative fractionation recognition in the condensate becomes difficult. But from here, when the oil is not altered, this part can contain evaporative condensate and oil. They will plot here, even though they lost part of the hydrogen. They will not show by the reduction. So you see, this, this picture, this and the next diagram will tell you combined uh, all these things. Suppose this one. Among the effect, you see, this is the original oil, that means unaltered huh? oil. And then these are the things that are evaporative fractionation. These are biodegraded. But the point is biodegradation has this tendency, it has also this tendency. So some of the tendency that is plotted like evaporating, they may be due to biodegradation. That means I combine the earlier diagram and this diagram to exclude. Yeah, yeah. You see, but my question is, those condensate could very well be evaporated condensate. They got biodegraded. Now, this is and the same type of diagram. This is the Saman. Here. You see, the inverted V is stronger, less, less, 
now shallower one is lighter. Uh, so this is clearly indicating the link. Is it loss, precipitation, again escape? No? So and and the idea is in simple terms that suppose I got this oil, I would definitely think there are condensates about if there are sands. If I get condensate there, evaporative condensate, I would definitely tell go down. No? Now the point is how to recognize but this is the confusion you may have. The evaporative condensate. The, the, the oil or condensate that lost the thing shows the fractionation of evidence. <coughs> but the counterpart which goes out not necessarily shows. It can again fractionate and then lighter condensate goes up. But if it does not, it will look like a normal condensate. But I can define the maturity and tell you that this maturity is the same like oil. It was never a normal condensate. So by that way you know the process. And and your that uh, retrograde is a terminology. I mean you go in, it's the same similar process. And this one which I was telling this is a, like a natural laboratory. In these days you mix heavy oil and light oil. You see, these are the heavy components. These are all biomarkers, heavy molecular ends. And everything is gone, and everything and everything, and suddenly you get light hydrocarbons. It, it cannot, bacteria cannot do that. They need the uh, simpler structure first, no? and then go to the other. So this is because of the mixing. And the light ends also got biodegraded. So you see, we have the evidence of mixing, extremely heavy, and with uh, less head, uh, condensate, gas condensate. Now your question, this we know that it comes from an upper rim. What is the source of the gas condensate? We assume that it could be uh, an upper rim. You see, so those, those questions are still not absolutely answered. Some of them can be, some of them may not be. No? Uh, so, uh, but we can, we can address that by another means. Uh, the diamondoid GCMS, no? the whole oil diamondoid GCMS. Diamondoids are oil to gas crack. And certain parameters will show mixing of this kind. So I will show you a diagram. Yeah, what you need to do, whole oil, Diamondoid GCMS, no? and that can mixing and whatever deeper petroleum systems they can help you. I'll tell you in what situation they cannot, what situation. So we see this, all this. Another thing which you don't see, and I'm sure we have, because the only thing we didn't see so many samples and careful uh, these days analysis are better. Okay? You see, what happens if heavy oil mixes with this. No? Well, we can mix oil with oil also. No? Oil with the same oil. Uh, richer. And how do you know we, we can mix a extremely heavy biodegraded residue with a new oil charge of similar kind. No? Uh, and uh, uh, that also we can identify. So there is a one compound where uh, all the bio, uh, biomarkers are gone and some demethylated lobin, which is specially forms when it is heavily biodegraded. You see the biomarkers, you see they are all unaltered, and suddenly you see a big, a large peak like this, and you cannot explain otherwise. So, so that is also possible. So, now, I feel like to complete this uh, study, uh, to understand, uh, Krishna is addressing that we should do field-wise, no? or not thinking of the whole basin at a time. Restrict your area and try to analyze more. And go a little beyond GC, because there are more stories there which you can prove, but otherwise people will question. No? And so uh, for, for oil quality, obviously, I need this. For knowing alteration processes, I need this, no? uh, GC. 
WOGC is coal oil gas chromatograph. Correct, gas chromatograph. Uh, and these, these biomarkers, and carbon isotopes you may or may not do, but I think it's helpful for this for my point of view. But these two are important to address to uh, questions. So this, and another thing is, well, I, I'm sure the BP is doing uh, gas analysis, but the point is, gas uh, is not done. And these days, gas can be analyzed as for the, the isotopes. Customs uh, have no problem. And they, they have a lot of stories to tell. Uh, with the oil and uh, gas associated with oil, gas associated with condensate, and free gases that you see, no? which are kind of not associated. Because the point is, we have so many, at least in the offshore Atlantic, I at least think all the time two gas sources. One is the La Luna itself, another is the tertiary itself. You see, tertiary, the La Cruz and all these things, they have type 3, type 2, 3. I'm a post-cardist uh, indicator that published uh, there. And they have mapped uh, areas which are kind of peak, peak oil generation. And they actually thought that this is the source of the whole oil, but well, they're not right. But the point is, I accept the data, and I think like that those tertiary intervals has to use some liquid hydrocarbons. And because of the kerogen type, they will be like one single. And we just cannot discard it. And I'm just also thinking that is that kind of condensate is affecting the biomarkers also to give the more kerogen. But I, I just, uh, uh, Before you go on, um, the deuterium isotope of methane is what, going to, what is going to tell you whether it's thermal, thermal gas or biogenic gas. Mm -hmm. so right. all, yeah. all these carbon isotope methane, methane, propane, and uh, deuterium isotope methane, I can use to tell uh, whether it is a thermogenic gas or a biogenic gas whether it is a mixture, what percent of the mixture, and then what is the maturity of the gas. And if you are finding oil, uh, suppose I have a gas oil separation in the reservoir, and gas separated, uh, whether you can relate no? by maturity, uh, oil and gas can be related. So they give everything, we need a few things, uh, you know, uh, maturity, source, alteration. No? So, so that can be done. Yeah, a good point uh, this to tell. This is, uh, tells you what type of gas. And suppose uh, the paper that you presented, he discussed, right? What is the last paper that you? Hibiscus. Hibiscus. Okay, that, that uh, hibiscus uh, condensate is a, uh, it's a gas uh, with little uh, condensate. And that condensate, is immature condensates. You see, it has been taken out of the rock. The gas can solubilize, no? And uh, so, well, you can think that such contributions are possible. The, if it is more mature, suppose, cruise in the, in the uh, offshore, eastern offshore no, area, where no, it is no, mature, no. they will generate a uh, significant amount of uh, hydrocarbon liquids. The gas can solubilize that. They can mix it. Is added to the resource, no? To the liquid. And and uh, let us think this way. Like we have seen them all, except right. And so this we know, no? Evaporated uh, condensates, residual oil, and evaporated condensate. Uh, if we have residual oil, and if we see the seismic section that there is a scenario, there are sands and other things. You can have heavier oil below. No? So they will go on from level to level. And if it is uh, one fault communicating, well, then it, you can connect one with the other. Otherwise, as he says, you can exit. You know the process, but you cannot exit. But if some, some faults are continuous, like for long, uh, uh, Great depth 
Well, they can be connected also. And now there are unaltered oils and biodegradable oils. He told that if we have unaltered oils and so below you may be biodegradable oils. And below may be better oils, progressively better oils. It's not that systematic uh, because uh, uh, it's generally true. But if there is a lateral uh, groundwater percolation, things can selectively alter. If there are the rate of water changes between, because of the reservoir property, then one can be more effective than the other. But the idea is if I find a nice 40 degree unaltered oil in an area, and I have a um, lot of biodegraded oil, I would not discard the field if there are a lot of cells below. Because the oil source is deeper. So it must come. This is the petroleum system. In my accumulation nodes, in my oil source kitchen, if I connect, intermediate places are all prospective areas. So I should I should analyze with the real section and try to visualize which sense would be uh, connected. And then take the one. Now, this one, Extremely biodegradable oil mixed with the condensate, that GC, where oil is uh, completely biodegraded and just some uh, gas condensate. This is like a natural uh, uh, mixing. And you see, if that con gas condensate were not there, the oil would not produce. But with that mixture, the oil becomes produced by uh, 15 degrees. And I remember, I don't remember the author, there was a paper, Trinitarium. He published, he was probably petroleum engineer, he published a paper one time in oil and gas journal. And he was discussing about oil properties. Because you see, the behavior of an API, 20 degree, by other means, and this means are very different. They will not behave. Your reservoir uh, models and this, that, which are simple, take only API, will not work for prediction. But this, uh, if I get a situation like this, I can think that uh, better, better, uh, more gas condensate which are unaltered can be there, mixed with biodiversity, less biodiversity, all these things. In, in, in Jan, Janus Basin of Colombia, such things are happening and they are producing. They are producing happy oils at uh, 12, 15 degree API. So you see, uh, real prediction needs. Uh, integration, plot of integration. But the general idea is there. And I think people shouldn't give up yeah, as long as they think that if I get at that depth, it will be commercial, it will be commercial. And uh, I still live by the building. And then oil. Now, for the two points, one is where the gas on the condensate coming from. Is it coming from uh, uh, Luna or what? And whether it is a mixed oil, you can get further evidence. And I tell you, okay, there are diamondite GC MAS which you quantify PPM, diamondite things and biomarkers also. And then there are normally biomarkers like stearine, star pins you've heard of, and biomarker maturity progressively with, with increasing maturity of the oil, the biomarkers uh, are lost. Biomarkers bio bio are lost with maturity. Uh, and then if you have a condensate, the diamond oils increase, oil to gas credit. So this parameter is for the diamond oils. It is increasing oil to gas crack. This is increasing oil maturity. The heavy oil will be here. Suppose a heavy mature oil will be here. The oil will be here, normal oil. And then this should be the condensate. So the point is if I have a mixture of normal oil, suppose our uh, evaporative condensate, if it is from the oil, it should plot here. Oil should plot here, uh, diamond oil should plot here. 
If that condensate is thermal condensate, it should plot here. If it is a mixture of two maturity differences, it should plot here. So, you see, you can, these are real elements. And, uh, and then this was, I was talking about the, uh, the paper, the lemma. This area seems to be the oil only, no? and the generation. These are gas from source mm -hmm. And uh, obviously there is generation we cannot describe. But gas charge can solubilize. So, uh, you, you know, we just cannot behave like this, no? It should be possible, very possible. Now, uh, let me just quickly go for five minutes, right? Five minutes compartmentalization. What we do, well, this geochemical technique, your gas chromatogram, are used for a few things. Reservoir fluid continuity, same concept used for production allocation. In some countries, this is very important. Colombia, suppose, you cannot produce this limestone, you can produce the sand and like this. For your uh, enhanced recovery, you may think that this is a better quality than the other. And you want to inject things uh, and uh, you want to see how it performs. So production elevation comes into the picture. And uh, uh, so uh, geochemistry is a powerful tool and people do routinely. I have done uh, oil spills in Gulf of Mexico for payments with 96 oils. I have done many with 30, 40 oils. And they come out, picture comes out. Okay, the idea is, uh, well, you speculate, I mean, if there is a shale, you speculate, they should be separated, joined, but you don't know. This is a confirmation. But what you see, that's what my geochemical thing. You see the GC. Now, in most of the, in one field, it is expected that uh, it is coming from the same source. Sometimes maturity can be different, right? Lower upper, but many times it is the same. But what is happening is alteration alteration in the reserve because of biodegradation, other processes, PBT conditions, oil uh, rock interaction, many things happen where changes can occur between one and the other if they remain isolated. So that differences we can find out by looking at the smaller peaks. There are so, so many and you cannot identify them. We know they are what compounds, cyclohexanes, in some aromatics. So we get that, and you get a chromatogram. This is just from 9 to whatever 70. And you get these are now with the software and others, you see much better picture. No? Originally, this was be done this way. And then you see all these peaks, and then you normalize by taking peak ratios and then plot in star diagram. And then you see the difference. Difference uh, means that they are not communicating. And uh, similarity, uh, mostly you can think that it is probably a particular species. So it's like this that you see this, they separate out. Six oils the same, the others are different. So this is the technique. This is some example that I had in one field in Colombia. Suppose uh, 10 oils are the same and the other one is different. So production allocation is the same thing, but how you do it, suppose here, one is limestone, uh, this is limestone, this is sandstone. And you take two individual oils, and then you produce together. And then uh, they calculate and give the oil to the national uh, government. No? And so what you do, you have two end members, and anything in between I can find it, right? So, we can find by 50-50 mixture, do calibration, and and then take the peaks and then any oil that I measure, we plot along this line, and we do it. We took a linear relation because we take a range where they should be in uh, peak ratio values. And now, um, oil uh, tracer, the uh, weather board has software where they compare and there's a software also which helps. So when I do projects, I take this and this both and tell the uh, production of And uh, then you monitor. Suppose uh, I have uh, done projects where 
like every three months they send samples and then they monitor or send uh, The other methods exist, Schlumberger, Elibert, and they all have four meters and other things. So, well, the point is, uh, it is consistent. Uh, they are more expensive, you have to stop production and all this. This you like, just take a sam sample and you well. You don't even need PBT samples. So, even Schlumberger will use this data. So it is like that. Every, everybody uses it. Uh, previously, Shell and Chevron used to. Now it has become more popular. And it is a technique that is used. And it has application because you have so much faulting and, and uh, multiple cells and other things. So I guess that's, that's it. Thank you.